In this session, we're going to look at how we can load environment variables the correct way. When we're developing applications, we do have development environment and we have production environment. These environments, they don't have to be mixed up. For instance, the development environment will be running things locally. The production, we're getting our data from, from the internet, be it our REST API, we are going to be using the one that we are going to use for production api that we've hosted but if you are developing we can develop locally so this minimizes the cost okay so let's just get into it to do it the correct way the first thing that we need to do we just need to install a flutter.env so i have already copied the snippet so i'm going to go ahead and install it so we just have to wait for it to install after finishing installing we are going to use it but before we use it we should have the two files for our environment we need to create our two files the first one is going to be .env.environment i've created both of these files but for this tutorial sec what i'm going to do i'm just going to go ahead and remove these two okay so first let's go ahead and create our .env dot development that's going to be our first and then we paste this inside so you can write whatever you want but for this tutorial we're just going to use api key and api base url as our test as our test keys okay the next one we're going to go ahead and create another dot env file but this one is going to be for production so what we can do we can just copy this file that we created make a duplicate of it okay so here we have dot env dot production that's going to be our next file so this file is used when the application is in production mode so here we can just come right ahead and change this to production so after creating these two files the next thing is to go ahead to pubspec yaml we need to go ahead and hook this into our assets in our assets section going to our lib we are going to create a folder and we're going to call it let's just call it model after creating this model folder we need to create a new file and we need to call it environment after creating the environment we need to create a class the class name is going to be environment environment like that okay so let's just save it like that we need to load the right file okay so we have these two files right but we need to determine which environment are we in are we in production or are we in development right so we have but before we get to that part we need to go to our pubspec yaml in our pubspec yaml we need to go ahead and load these files under our assets okay so we have dot env dot development dot env dot production so we need to load them here under our assets so that they can be read in our project right so going back to our environment in our environment now that we created the class now we need to to set it up so first we need to create a function that we're going to use to get the environment that we are in okay so the first thing we're going to create a static string here we need to get a file name so we need to have a condition so here we need to check whether our application is in k debug mode or it's in release mode but here i'm going to use release mode okay if our application is in release mode then we're going to just go ahead and return production environment okay so our production environment we have to access dot env file name that we're going to load to our application else we're just going to to return dot env dot development like that okay so this is how we we load which environment are we in this is just loading the file name after loading the file name we need to initialize our our dot env so going back to our main dot dart in our main dot dart we need to go to our main method in our main method we are going to make this a future void after changing it to a future void we need to make it asynchronous and right underneath we need to await for our our dot env to load okay our file to load so here we need to call dot env dot so here we are not getting one environment right 
we, we're just getting the whole environment that we want to, 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 to load. We're going to use load. And when loading, we are required to provide the file name. So if we have over, we have the string the file name, right? So this is the .env that we want to load for this particular development environment. Okay, so we need to specify the key, which is file name. And the file name, we're going to get it from, from our environment dot file name. Okay, so this is the function that we, we created here. Okay, so that's all if you want to load. Okay, so right at the bottom, now we need to go ahead and use the environment. In this case, we're in a, a debug. Okay, we are in a debug environment. So the environment that should be chosen is the development environment. So to use these environment values that we have, now it's easy. So let's take for example here, I just want to, to display the keys, some of the keys that we have here. We need to go back to our environment our environment class in our environment class we need to go ahead and make the the keys accessible okay so to make the keys accessible we're going to create another static string and here we are getting so first let's get the api key okay this api key is the api key that we have here okay so we have to give it a name and this name is the one that we are going to use in our application to access this particular API key. Okay, so here we need to go ahead and return the API key. So to return the API key, we are going to need to access our .env loaded the environment already. Now we are just accessing the .env environment and then we are going to access API key. Okay, so this one is a nullable string. So we have to provide a fallback. So a fallback is a string. So here we can provide an empty string or we can just say API key not specified. Okay, so that's how we get API keys. So going back to to our main dot dart here, we just want to show the API key. So if we take a look at our production environment, our API key is just written provide production here. And if we go back to our development, it's written as this. Okay, so we can just make it development here. Okay, like that. So on this text, what I'm going to do, we just change this. So in here, we need to access the environment. From the environment, we're getting the API key. Okay, and we have to remove this const. So let's go back. Okay, not initialized. So that means we have to restart the application. So I'm going to stop it here and then I'm going to run the application. Our application has restarted. You can see this is our API key and this is the API key development. So if we go back to our development, this is what we're getting, right? So we can do the same for our API base URL. So we can come back to the environment, just copy this line, paste it here. We change the, the name to API base URL right and the key that we're getting is API API base URL okay and we can replace this as well okay so now we cut we are able to access this API base URL so if we go back to our main door dart in our my home page right in my home page we can change this API base URL then here we are accessing API base URL like that so that's the API base URL okay so this is the development environment so when you build a release application you are not going to get a development environment but you're going to get a production environment so instead of loading this environment our application will load the production environment. And to what we've done so far, it increases security of our application in case like we want to push this code to GitHub. So first we initialize a, a, a repo, right? If we initialize, this is what we are going to be pushing to GitHub, but we don't want to push environments to, to GitHub. So if we don't want to do that, we just go to git ignore and we are going to ignore these two files. Okay, here we do have dots env.development okay so 
if we just save the if we just save here right we, we've written the name of the file you can see our count is going down from 190 to 189 so we can do the same for for our production so for our production file we just write the name of the file in our dot git ignore file so that we can exclude it from from our our repository so here we have 188 files so we can push this code without pushing our our environments to github so our code is now safe and we set up an environment whereby we can alternate from from the development environment without having any hassles